with the announcement that the Minardi Toro Rosso Alpha Tauri Racing Bulls Visa Credit Card Currency Transfer Red Bulls will have this incredibly funky name this coming season, it got someone in a comment section, or might have been on my Discord, or Twitter. Either way, it was somewhere saying that the teams are losing their identities, and it adds to something that was said often in my last video, and another opinion piece that I've done recently, that is that the sport's being Americanized a bit too much. And by that, I'm talking about the sponsor side of things, and that's been the case for about 55 years now. You've got the Lucky Strike BAR team, Scuderia Ferrari Marlborough, Goldleaf team Lotus and Mercedes AMG Patronus, to name quite literally four. And it's a similar thing over in the BTCC, Bristol Street Motors Racing rather than Accelerate Motorsport. Team Dynamics was Halford Honda, Napa Racing, the list goes on. The teams will be named using their sponsors because the sponsors are paying the bills and that's how it will go. Because if there's one thing that teams like, it's money. I guess it's that worry that the drivers are going to start sounding like the NASCAR drivers and start going, yeah, I just want to thank McDonald's, Texaco, Chevrolet, Skinny Dicks halfway in, a good year for the victory and, and God. But in the late 80s and into the early 1990s, two teams had their names completely changed because of outside investment. One of those was the Arrows team that became Footwork, and I've touched upon this a couple of times in other videos, but the other was March. They became Leighton House. So, some background. In 1969, March Engineering was formed, the name being an acronym of the four men that got together in a shed and started the company. Max Mosley, Alan Rees, Graham Coker, and Robin Hurd. And each of those four men had their own expertise that they brought into the operation. Mosley was the commercial brains given his background in law, Reese looked after the racing team, Coca looked after the factory in Bista, and Hurd designed the cars. Hurd's son would later attend UCL in London, and while there he became friends with Nick Worth, who would later form Simtech with Mosley. Their goal was simple, but it was something not even Lotus, Cooper, McLaren or Brabham had attempted. The goal was to produce competitive but at the same time cheap and reliable cars for customers wanting to enter Formula 1. If you go on Wikipedia and peruse through the old race results in Formula 1, there's usually something like Lotus Climax, then Lotus BRM, Cooper Climax, then Cooper Maserati, Brabham Repco and Brabham something else, I don't know, I'm just picking names at this point. Because a lot of the privateer entrants and have-a-go heroes who would just do their home Grand Prix would often buy a customer Lotus Cooper Ferrari or whatever, lob whatever engine they could afford in the back and try and be competitive. With March though, there was no try, there was only do which sounds oddly similar to that Yoda thing, doesn't it? March was going to be competitive, and with the Ford DFE proving to be a go-to off-the-shelf solution for privateers entering Formula 1, their cars would be best suited for having a DFE or any other engine in to put in and go, and in the process save the customers a bit of money. Instead of starting out small, March went big immediately and built cars for Formula 1, F2, F3, Formula Ford and Can-Am, as well as entering its own cars into F1, 2 and 3. And in 1970, it was almost instant returns. While the season was marred by the death of Jochen Rint at Monza, which made him the only posthumous world champion in Formula 1 history, the March 701, run by March and Tyrrell, as well as a smattering of other customer teams, won the Spanish Grand Prix in the hands of Jackie Stewart, and scored a number of other podiums as Rint and Ix fought for the title. This meant that March would finish the season in third, with 48 points. In 1971, Ken Tyrrell was now building his own cars, and Stewart had romped to a second title. But Peterson in the 7-Eleven, not sponsored by the American Convenience Store, finished second four times as March ended the season in fourth. The stats on your screen are for the Formula 1 team, but most of the customer teams were following the same formula the factory operation was. A couple of the teams had Alpha engines, but most had Fords. And I've said several times now that in the 1970s, a March chassis, a Hewlett gearbox and the Ford Cosworth DFE was pretty much the plucky privateer starter pack. The 7-Eleven was also known as the Spitfire because of the front wing being shaped like, well, the wings of a Spitfire. Looks a bit weird, but it must have worked well enough if Peterson scored four second places in it. And besides Formula 1, the company branched out into Indy racing, winning five Indy 500s in a row between 1983 and 1987. And that car was pretty much March's attempt at copy-pasting the Williams FW07, but that car was an abject failure in Formula 1, but was then converted for the ovals, where it ended up winning the marquee Indy race, well, five times in a row. The company also built Group C slash IMSA GTP endurance races, the 83G in this photo racing at Sears Point, now the Sonoma Raceway, but it will always be Sears Point Raceway because, well, NASCAR Racing 3. A March IMSA GTP car won the Daytona 24 in 1984. In 1982, March left Formula 1, but in 1987 they were going to be back. Previously, they were the Rothmans March team and probably had quite a striking car to look at. Now, though, they were back, preparing for the 
reintroduction of naturally aspirated engines, well, fully, at least, in 1989. Gone with Rothman's colours, and in was Cyan. They were now the Leighton House March team. Leighton House sounds like it should be the name of some five-bedroom detached new build on a cul-de-sac in the Staffordshire countryside, or some scungy office building in Darleston, or some stately home in Surrey but spelt L-E-I-G-H-T-O-N rather than L-E-Y-T-O-N. Either way, March was back on the grid, with some new backers. Leighton House was a Japanese company that was mostly involved in property, but later diversified into what is often described on the internet as a lifestyle brand. Whatever that means. I'm guessing it means restaurants and hotels. It was set up by a gentleman called Akira Akagi, and he in turn set up Leighton House Racing to help support the career of up-and-coming Japanese racer Akira Hagiwara in domestic competitions. But Hagiwara was killed testing a touring car, and instead the company switched to backing a Toyota at the 1986 24 Hours of Le Mans. At some point, Akagi ended up at Imola. While there, Akagi met a struggling driver called Ivan Capelli. The Italian was a bit down on his luck, and he managed to get Akagi to agree to a deal, which was, you take 30% of any prize money that I win, Capelli that is, in exchange, I'll drive for you. So Capelli went to Japan and immediately finished second at Fuji. But Akagi was a very nice man and said, no Ivan, you keep that prize money. Capelli was then given the equivalent of $4 million, which he would then use to get into Formula 1. As already mentioned, at the same time, March was considering going back into Formula 1, because turbos were going to die soon, and going back in in 1987 seemed like a good idea to get prepared for the reintroduction of the naturally aspirated engines. We've already been over this. The car wasn't exactly some genius piece of engineering in 1987. It was an F3000 or F2 car modified for a new engine, fuel tank, and better aero. And then they threw a DFZ in the back of it. The team was tiny. It had 17 people, and that's including Capelli's dad, Akagi, Akagi's girlfriend, and Akagi's translator. In 1987, non-turbo cars were allowed, and were eligible for the Colin Chapman Trophy, which was awarded to the most successful non-turbo car of the year, and then they had the Jim Clark Trophy, which was handed to the best-performing non-turbo driver of the year. These two championships didn't last long. But the car was let down by reliability. According to Team Bossy and Phillips, there were some dodgy piston rings in circulation, and Brian Hart ended up looking after the engines for March, on top of being the engine looker after her at Tyrrell. March went and bought a Cosworth off Williams. Williams had one to spare despite being a Honda Power team, and used that. At the same time, they managed to get Judd power for 1988. Judd was working on an engine for the return to naturally aspirated Formula 1 that was based off the Honda design. After getting permission from Honda to use the base, he got to work and ended up supplying to March, Williams and Ligier as Honda had joined up with McLaren, and the engine was the most powerful of the non-turbos that year. And with the human aerodynamics cheat code Adrian Newey now working for the Formula 1 team having come over from the American operation, March was able to build a purpose-built Formula 1 car, and it was working way better than anybody could have anticipated. At one point, Capelli was leading the Japanese Grand Prix after overtaking the MP44 of Prost on track, and he'd also finished second at the Portuguese Grand Prix, a race where Capelli became the first person to overtake one of the MP44s on track. Senna wasn't driving in that race to the level that the McLaren had shown the rest of the year. He, among other drivers in that particular Portuguese Grand Prix, were dealing with erroneous fuel readings that said they had less or more fuel than they actually had. But at Suzuka, Prost was not able to believe that the underfunded and small team could produce a car capable of taking corners at the speed it was doing. And that was because Nui had started designing cars for, want of a better word, properly. Before, it was a case of extract every bit of power from the engine you could to offset the massive wings you put on for the downforce. Nui was designing cars with aero efficiency in mind, and had also designed the car around Capelli, who, like Prost, was on the small side. The problem was, Maurizio Gugelman in the other car was a lot taller and didn't fit properly. A bit like when George Russell, who is 6 foot 1, tried to fit into a car built for the 5 foot 9 Lewis Hamilton. And Mr. Akagi himself was found out that weekend in Portugal. What had happened, according to Adrian Newey's book, How to Build a Car, brilliant book, I suggest you read it, what had happened was an Italian journalist who was, well, quite attractive, had walked into the team motorhome and asked Mr. Akagi for an interview, and his translator was sitting with him. This journalist must have been so attractive that somehow Akagi was now speaking perfect English. But come the end of the year, March had outscored the better funded, equipped and staffed Williams who had the same engines. But then into the start of 1989, disaster, when Capelli's old boss and friend at Genoa Racing, Cesare Garibaldi, was killed in a car crash. Capelli went from F1's new star to totally burned out, and then March started selling parts of the company to Akagi, including the Formula 1 team. The team then expanded almost overnight, and it meant that they would lose that little something that made them what they were. 
The 1989 car was also a dog. It didn't help that the Judd engines hadn't been able to keep up with the bigger boys on the grid like Honda, Ferrari and Renault. Gugerman was able to get a third in Brazil, but he was in the 88 car at that time. And then at Mexico, one of the cars didn't qualify. 89 also being the season where 20 constructors fielded 39 cars. Don't get excited, that's never happening again. Sponsors aren't going to be sinking money into cars that aren't making grids, especially with the money involved in Formula 1 today. But that aside, March was down in the dumps, Googleman's podium at Jacarapagua being the only points March would score that year. The rest of it? Retirements. A lot of retirements. The following year in Mexico, it was both marches that wouldn't make the grid. In 1989, Max Moses sold his shares in the company and set off to form Simtech with Nick Worth. So, in 1991, the team would now be Leighton House, rather than Leighton House March. Leighton House was now the team and the constructor. The problem with the 1990 car was due to the wind tunnel at Southampton. The rolling road had become so warped, Nui was designing cars for something that didn't exist, so the aero was all off. It took him a few months to realise, but he then got it fixed, and at the French Grand Prix, Capelli and Googleman were looking like they'd score a 1-2 using their Giga Strat of not changing the tyres. It was a strategy so bold that James Hunt on the BBC commentary thought that it was a publicity stunt for getting some TV coverage, because they'd failed to qualify six times that season. But Prost caught Capelli with a couple of laps left on the board and took the victory. It was a great turnaround for the team, but nobody was there to celebrate from the senior staff. As Motorsport Magazine wrote in 2005, team boss Phillips had been taken ill with meningitis, a nasty disease that causes inflammation of the lining around your brain and spinal cord, and Akagi was sweating because the money was drying up. He'd borrowed heavily against the banks and was only still in Formula 1 because if he pulled out, the banks would want to know why. And when Phillips was taken ill, Akagi had hired an accountant to run the team and accountants running F1 teams doesn't bode well. So Nui, who had just been offered a job at Williams, left. Phillips was almost ousted from the team but Capelli stepped in to save him because the rest of the team rallied around Capelli who had rallied around Phillips and Capelli himself was very, very popular within the team. Almost too much of a nice guy to succeed in Formula 1, and those were his own words. So, Phillips stayed on as the team principal, but then left at the end of the year anyway to join Jordan. The team was falling apart. 1991 was an utter shower with retirements left, right and centre, and a single point scored at the Hungarian Grand Prix. Akagi had teamed up with Ilmore to create the engine for the car, and it was designed to be as light as possible, as well as being small and being an inch or so shorter than the V10 offered by Renault but it was just unreliable, causing most of the team's issues that year. Then at the end of the season, the accountant was booted. And also, Akagi was in trouble. Kuriki, Sariho Rozuzuda! I mean, that's the worst Japanese accent and pronunciation you've ever heard, but it loosely translates to... Crikey, it's the Rozers! The Japanese Ministry of Finance had raided eight offices of Fuji Bank in the October of 1991. The raids had been conducted as part of allegations that the bank had been involved in a series of massive frauds, in which senior officials had issued fake certificates of deposit to customers, which were then used to obtain 700 billion yen of loans from other financial institutions. Akagi was indicted on fraud, scam and money laundering charges, as well as accused of using the ill-gotten gains to fund the racing team and his entire business. That business empire crumbled, as did his freedom, as he was banged up for 10 years. After his release, he started up another investment company, and I can't really find much else about it, other than in 2018, he died at the age of 78. So for the 1992 season, Leighton House was back to being March, and it was such a um, anonymous season that most people probably won't be aware that they were even on the grid. But they were. I guess it's 1992 and that season we're all too preoccupied by Mansell's Williams, Andrea Moda and the demise of Brabham. But, like I said, they were there. The Leighton House team had been bought out by a consortium of Ken Marable, John Byfield, who's a man we need to visit again at some point, and Henny Vollenberg, a Dutch journalist. Capelli was gone, having gone off to Ferrari to drive that utterly terrible car we looked at a couple of weeks ago, and Googleman was gone too. He'd gone to Jordan and the two were replaced by Carl Vedlinger and Paul Belmondo, who was then replaced by Emanuele Naspetti. Then Vendlinger ran out of money and was replaced by Jan Lammers. But things were looking grim. The team couldn't hold on. There were attempts to sell the team to another investment group and Lammers and Jean-Marc Gounon were supposed to be the drivers of the cars. The marches did turn up to the 1993 South African Grand Prix, but they were by far the slowest cars on the grid. Well, slowest by default because the engines were still in Britain. Capelli, meanwhile, was now at Jordan after the disaster of 1992, and he also disappeared from Formula 1 after that race. Following the end of the team in 1993, March was essentially a financial services outfit. 
March and Rolt, another constructor of lower Formula cars, were sold on, but only the Rolt name continued as the March name was wound up. The engineering assets were sold and the blueprints can now be made available to March car owners or anyone looking to restore or repair one, or for those looking to do historical research. The website is called The Markives. Love it. The demise of March is one of those casualties of the late 80s and early 90s that saw someone enter the F1 scene that had money coming in from the wrong places, even if the people in the team had the best intentions. It's the team that kick-started the career of Adrian Newey, and a team of less than that of a registered squad of football players managed to design a car that went toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the most dominant Formula 1 cars ever created, and they were also the only non-turbo car to lead a lap in 1988. Petrolicious said that they were the picture-perfect privateer, and in those early couple of seasons, they probably were, especially with those other clown shows that were going on around them. So then, the story of what Leighton House and March and all that stuff actually was. If this has cleared stuff up for you or taught you something new, then do like this video so I know I've done a good job. And for more like this, get subscribed with the bell on so you never miss out on anything else I do around here. Massive thanks as ever to the fine bunch of lads at Patreon for the continued support, and if you want to help support at a more personal level, then a link to Patreon is in the description, along with links to Discord, socials, and other bits and pieces that you might find useful. There might still be some offers on the F1 store if that floats your boat. So until next time, I've been Aidan Mord, have a great day wherever you are, and goodbye.